Welcome to Inside Chat. My name is Brad Sandlands from Quality Insight. Uh, welcome to Volume 3 of our new Quality Insight Studio One. Um, today, I've got some important topics to talk to you about, mainly from conversations I've had this week with regards to residential aged care placement. Uh, before I get going on that, please like and subscribe uh, what you hear. Um, comment. It's really important for us to get a good idea of what extra content uh, we should be posting or if it's relevant and hitting the mark. Um, this week, really from a uh, residential aged care search point of view, had a number of conversations with hospital networks as well as uh, people seeking care and getting some really good feedback as to uh, the difficulties they've had in their approach. Now, the people I've been talking to are professional business people that have their mum or dad um, or a significant loved one that's requiring care um, and really the toll and the burden placed on them for seeking uh, how to take that person through the journey and placing them into residential aged care. Uh, it does surprise me every once in a while that uh, I come across um, these situations. Being in the industry, you get a bit store blind as to the process and you think that it's um, it's quite easy to find services until you speak to the majority of people and they really do struggle. It's not as if they shop for resi aged care every day. Uh, so I wanna talk through some of those steps today. And this is particularly important uh, conversation for those of you that are professional business people, um, people working in the in the workspace, you might be 55 to 60 years of age. You have mum and dad that are approaching those uh, crucial years of coming into residential aged care. Um, I would actually uh, encourage you all to have or start the conversation about what does care look like for your loved one moving forward um, and really start to get a buy-in from them of what their wishes are. Um, majority of people will want to live at home um, and pass away in their own home. Sometimes that's just not possible. Um, they'll go in for a critical junction in their life. It may have been a fall or a, an illness. Uh, and then you've been told by the hospital that they simply can't go home. So um, then you're in a big rush and that's where people get upset. That's where they get overly stressed. That's where people's wishes aren't necessarily taken into account because they're forced into residential aged care. It also puts the care service into a tricky situation where they're then bringing somebody in who does not want to be there. So um, it can be quite uh, tricky from that original um, piece. So I'd encourage you all to start the conversation. Um, when you're looking at selecting a service, so you've had that discussion, um, you're at that critical junction and you are then told you need to go and find a home for mum and dad and here's seven homes and, and go and tour them. Um, you have a lot of resources at your disposal. Uh, first and foremost, you've got the My Age Care website. Um, that's a, a resource designed to help you guide your way through the process. Uh, you've also got other services that are user pays services. Um, there are some government funded services, but I'm just going to concentrate on the user pays ones because uh, that's where all my conversations were this week. Uh, there are a number of bed brokers or bed placement agents out there that do a magnificent job um, in selecting and, and finding and, and coaching you through that process. So first and foremost, you can do some Google searches around bed placement. Um, I'm more than happy for any bed placement agents to reach out to me and I can post your details on these videos. Um, our Quality Insight arm, Connect the Dots, does bed placement as well. We also do uh, bed placement uh, on behalf of hospitals and some aged care facilities that have had to do some failed placement, um, rehoming and all that sort of stuff. Because um, again, that can be quite tricky. And usually they're cases where someone has decline in health the, the bed type that that person is looking for is not available in that service and there's nowhere else for them to go. Um, generally, we help them find the next place pretty quickly. And the, the aged care service pays for that. So um, they're, they're, um, they're taking up their obligation under uh, finding another place for these people. Um, these bed placement people will generally uh, do a bit of a triage. They'll find out what your care needs are, what your uh, other service needs are. And then they'll approach the care service on your behalf or you can do it as well. Um, some will go with you on a guided tour. Others will um, will sort of step back a little bit and let you take full control. Uh, but they're certainly there to help. Um, the other part of the service that's available in selecting a, an aged care home is aged care accredited financial advisors. Uh, we deal with a number of them. Um, all very good. All got a great understanding of how the entry process works from a fees and charges point of view. They won't necessarily um, help you find a location, but they have um, reputable bed placement people that they deal with as well. So, And then, of course, you've got the providers themselves. Each provider has a different setup in, in how they they handle their, 
admissions processes. Um, but generally, if you call the head office, you should be able to get placed through. Um, again, part of my phone calls and discussions this week, some care providers do it better than others. Um, so uh, I would encourage every provider out there, if you're getting an inquiry coming through, please get back to these people. It puts their mind at ease. Um, I've had discussions with people that have placed their mother down with over 50 uh, aged care services. Uh, this lady wasn't a tricky case. She's probably a little bit lower on the ANAC score. Um, and that's probably why it, it wasn't so crucial to get her into care. But um, again, it gives the people peace of mind and it gives the industry a better reputation of great customer service and full transparency. Um, the other thing that you need to be doing when you're going through this is getting people to explain the process to you properly. Again, in a number of discussions that I've had, uh, lots of queries about how aged care works, how the fees and charges work, um, getting bill shock, uh, not necessarily the first month of entry, but a couple of months later, the bill has caught up. Uh, and that can create quite a bit of angst and, and controversy really in the people's mind. Um, it's extra stress that does not need to take place. So when you're reaching out to people, make sure they're explaining the process to you properly. You've got your list of questions. Um, if you've taken time off work to do this process, you don't want to be mucking around um, getting broad answers. You really want to get to the crux of what you need to know. Uh, and there are plenty of uh, reputable brands out there that can help you do this. Again, an aged care accredited financial planner or advice company, they are a great resource for explaining how invoices work, fees and charges, and really what they charge you is worth it in the end because uh, it takes so much stress and pressure off you in, in, um, when it comes to that second and third month when you finally got your loved one in care. Um, the other thing you need to be looking at is what's right for you. So currently right now, um, most aged care homes within Queensland market uh, and then around the country, I think Victoria is probably a little bit on the lower end, um, but the country is pretty much at that 95 to 96% occupancy. Um, that does mean there are vacant beds, but it means the bed type might be limited. So your loved one may need a particular uh, bed type or a, a complex care need um, that's currently not available in the service you want to be in. So you need to be prepared to either wait or have those conversations about what are your needs, uh, including your, your loved one, making sure their choices are, are fully taken into account. Uh, and be prepared to maybe go a bit further afield than your current suburb. Um, I can tell you now in um, the Brisbane metropolitan area, if you lived in the Carindale area, for example, and you wanted to be uh, homed quite close in that suburb, you will struggle to get something quickly. So you may need to travel a little bit further afield. Uh, and you may have other relatives that live close by to other facilities. So make sure you take that into account. I'd also um, like to point out there are a large number, too many people actually don't get a visit from their loved one once homed in a care home. So look at what's best for them. Um, if you want someone close by and you don't intend to visit, um, don't stop them from going to a care service when they really do need it. Make sure that you are really taking their needs into account and get them placed properly. Um, what you can do from there, again, I uh, suggest you go into My Age Care website. Your loved one needs a, um, an NSAF or an ACAR. Um, basically, it's an assessment criteria. If you go into My Age Care, it will ask you that question straight up. That's the passport to come into care. It gives the care home the uh, the clinical guide points as to what they need to do to come into care. It also ensures um, that they've got um, a permanent or respite or permanent and respite um, authorization to get funding. So it's really important to make sure that that has come through so everything is lined up and running smoothly as possible. Um, your next steps really are, if you are a business professional, you could be someone working, you're a working mum, dad, um, you don't have a hell of a lot of time, you really can't afford to take weeks off um, from your job, the stress, the toll. I would uh, actively encourage anyone in the market there, there are bed brokerage services available. They will cost you a couple of thousand dollars generally, um, but that spend up front will save you a lot of time, a lot of headache. Uh, and these bed placement services do a lot more than just find your bed. Um, some offer downsizing. Um, they'll help you um, declutter the home, sell off what doesn't want to be kept, dump what doesn't want to be done, um, place into the care home with your loved one what they need. Uh, they'll also help find removalists. They'll help cleaning uh, the whole lot. So there are some really great services out there. So uh, please reach out. I hope you liked what we spoke about today. Um, we really are quite um, 
I suppose, passionate about making sure people are getting through to aged care really well. Um, hospital channels do a great job of trying to bring people through, but there are a lot of services that can help uh, surround that. Uh, thanks again and have a great day.